In this follow-up problem, I'm going to generalize what I did in the first example by now allowing my upper bound to be a variable that I can evaluate my integral at all sorts of different upper bounds. Something like this is particularly useful if we have uh, velocity data, say, or a velocity definition, and we want to know what the position of our particle is at any given time t. Well, then we have to integrate our velocity from when time begins to the time that we're interested in. So I'm going to start by uh, copying some of what I have above here. Uh, getting rid of this c. I won't worry about that for this problem. All right, so I have my function y back, um, same one that I had before, but now for my integral, it's going to be a little bit different. One way I can do this is to define a new function, I'll just call it capital I for the integral, that's going to be a function of t now, and t is going to be that upper bound, so that is going to be the integral. of y of x evaluated from 0 to t. Right, I can run this, I can get i. Right, so again, what am I doing here? I'm putting in, uh, I can put a different value in for my upper bound and then keep changing what I'm taking the integration of or changing the bounds of integration. So for example, to repeat what I had in the last problem, i of 5 puts that upper bound of 5 on and we get the same result that we got in example number 1. Uh, but in that case, it was hard-coded that our upper bound was always 5. Here, we're going to be able to find different values. So for example, I want to know what if I evaluated my function from 0 to 3. Now I can use big I of 3 by changing that upper bound. So it's 4.55. And what I can do is now that I have this more general definition uh, to use with the integral, I can look at how does the integral change uh, over the value of x. So as I keep changing that upper bound, what's the integral? And I can uh, visualize that. Now unfortunately, integral uh, can only take a lower bound that's a scalar and an upper bound that's a scalar. You can't feed it a vector. But what I can do here is I can keep evaluating integral in a loop. So I want to evaluate this at many different values of t from, I'll just stick to 0 to, to 5. And I'm going to keep evaluating the integral at all of these spots. So I will have k equals 1 to length of te. And let me define out here. I will save all of these integrals into something I'll call, uh, I guess I'll call it capital Y. And I will pre-allocate this with these zeros. Right, so in y, I'm going to store, for that particular value of te, what my definite integral is from 0 to te. Right, so I'm just going to evaluate i of te of k. And that needs to be a lowercase k there. Right, so we see that it went through this for loop, it kept evaluating at different upper, upper bounds, uh, the value of t, and then storing that into this vector that I created, y. So y has 100 values. Uh, let me make this a little bit more dense here. I'll do 1,000 values uh, for demonstration. All right, so capital Y contains all 1,000 of those values, and now I can visualize how does the integral change as x increases. So I want to use those values of te versus the integral which was y. And put a little bit more detail on here. Turn on the grid. All right, so if this were something like we, the, we were given the velocity of an object and we want to know what its position was, well now we can see what is its position over time. Uh, in this case, x would be our, our horizontal would be our time. So we can see here that its position is changing uh, in this fashion. And again, we get back that value we got when we only evaluated it at the upper bound of 5.